I mentioned that line just last week when it appeared that May came close to matching April in terms of months in Major League Baseball where more strikeouts uh, than hits and the number of balls that are not being put in play right now. Uh, what is the, what is the Major League Baseball's stance on seeing the way that this season is playing out from that front, Tom? Yeah, listen, you know they've been concerned for the last few years here about it's not the length of the games, it's the pace of the action. And that really is attributed to the ball not being in play often enough. It's a huge concern. I think it's the number one concern for baseball. And, Rich, over the last decade or so, as strikeouts have gone up, they weren't that concerned because attendance has been rock steady. It really hasn't varied all that much. Now, all of a sudden, attendance is down almost 7%. And if it stays at this level, you're looking at the lowest level in a full season since 1996. That mm. was the first full year after the strike. Now, all of a sudden, I think there's concern that the marketability of the game, and especially tied to gate revenues, is being harmed because the ball just is not in play enough. And so what's the fix? What's the fix? Well, I'll let you pick two out of these three options for me because what we've had so far really is just band-aids. You're talking about the intense, automatic intentional walk, the limit on mound visits. They're really not affecting how we perceive and watch the game. I think you could lower the mound. You know, less of a plane, a steep plane on the delivery of the pitch would put more, more balls into play. Um, I think you could limit the, the roster of pitchers to 12. Because right now there's so many relief pitchers, managers don't mind pulling starters out of the game early, and starters know that. So now starters are using a reliever's mentality, and they're trying to strike everybody out from the minute the game starts. And we saw the Rays Rather use than, a we saw the Rays use a reliever as a starter, Tom. That's happened exactly. When you extrapolate it out, that looks to me like the worst case scenario. Yeah. That you're playing a whole game essentially with relief pitchers. Who thinks that's entertaining? And it may work. <laughs> in terms of efficiency, but it's not fan-friendly. Uh, and then my final one would be the pitch clock, and that's Rob Manfred's favorite one, and he backed off it this year because the union was so upset about the slow free agent market. He didn't want to shove that down their throats. Um, but that's the one he leans toward, and I, I would agree that if you're talking about one change to the game that doesn't touch the actual strategy of the game, that would make a difference in how you're watching the baseball game that would be the one that would give you the biggest bang for the buck. Well, how, how does how would that put more balls in play? Because the, the, ball, the ball's thrown more often? Uh, I mean, more it's more a perception of ball in play, that the time between the ball and play would be less. So you're not, you may not actually affect the number of strikeouts, but the time that you wait for the ball to be played would be reduced. So it would seem like the game is moving faster. Well, how about this one, Tom? I'll, I'll go you one better. Get rid of the shift. No more shift. That you draw an imaginary line right down the middle of the field and nobody who is technically uh, uh, and historically stationed on the left side of the diamond like a shortstop or third baseman may cross that line prior to a pitch being thrown and the same vice it's versa. It's a crazy idea. At the same, no, listen, at, 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 it's not sacrilegious. You think about the NFL, right? They've changed the way that uh, defenders – cover wide receivers, you know, they really can't hit them after five yards. Correct. Think about the NBA and then the, uh, the outlawing the, the zone defense, right? I mean, sports have always rebalanced uh, offense defense, and they put their thumb on the scale to do that sometimes. It's harder to do that in baseball because of tradition. I, I would say it's not a bad idea, Rich, but I would say it wouldn't have the effect that you think that it would. It does, the shifts especially harm left handed hitters who don't run well. That's when you really cover a huge amount of ground to the pull side. Uh, so it would have a small impact, but I don't think it would have a huge impact, not as much as you think. Well, what about the mentality, though, that people are trying to hit it over the shift and pitchers are, are throwing it further up in the strike zone? Uh, exit velocity on top of that is the mentality at the plate, thus more strikeouts uh, because they're trying to hit yeah. it over the shift. Just that aspect. No doubt. To me, if you want to reduce baseball to what the game is now, it's about the home run. It's, it's about trying to hit home runs and, on the other side, defending the home run, right? So when you do that, yeah, you're going to have more swing and misses. There's not as many balls in play. There's not as many hit and runs or sacrifices or rallies or singles are actually at an all-time low. So the idea of stringing hits together is not happening, so hitters do sell out. It would be like if the NBA was reduced to nothing but three-point shots and fouls, 
Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, it's easy for us to say just hit the ball to the other side of the field, but these guys now have been trained to be rewarded for hitting home runs and, and hitting for power. And I will tell you this, Rich, I think the actual stuff pitchers bring to the mound on a nightly basis is greater than it's ever been. So that makes hitting more difficult than it's ever been. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.